Hey guys, it's Stan here. Today I've got a new product from Sure that I want to share with you guys. The Sure True Wireless Secure Fit Adapter. Sure released this little product a bit earlier this year and it's a Bluetooth adapter for your Sure IEMs or in-ear monitors. I purchased a set off of Amazon and I've had it some time with it so I want to talk about my experience with this product and try to answer the question, is it worth picking up? This isn't Shure's first Bluetooth adapter. In fact, this isn't Shure's second Bluetooth adapter. This true wireless adapter is actually Shure's third attempt at putting out a compelling Bluetooth upgrade for your IEMs. I'll make sure to link all three in the description below for you guys to check out. Gone are the wires from the first and second gen Bluetooth adapters. The true wireless adapters wrap around each ear and are completely separate in each module having its own battery and power button. These adapters are compatible with virtually every Shure IEM produced in the last 15 plus years that features the MMCX connectors. The MMCX connector interface allows for the detachment of the IEMs and swapping of different cables and Bluetooth adapters. This flexibility has basically allowed Shure users to upgrade to the latest and greatest, including true wireless secure fit adapters. Out of the box, you get a quick start guide, the Bluetooth adapters, a USB-C cable, and a charging case. The box is actually surprisingly large for something that I thought that would be relatively small. The foam padding inside clearly is a one fit fits all for their entire lineup, including SKUs that have the actual monitors. I purchased just these adapters for my Shure SE-846s and intended to use those with these adapters. Installation and setup was pretty straightforward. Snapping the 846s onto the adapters gave a satisfyingly snug click and the Bluetooth pairing of the first device was pretty straightforward. A long press and hold on the power button sent the adapter straight into pairing mode and the phone picked it up straight away. I have one of those new iPhone 12 Pros which is basically what I used for my testing. Both the phone and the TW1 adapter support Bluetooth 5.0. Bluetooth 5.0 allows for more bandwidth than in the past and a much lower power consumption than previous Bluetooth versions. Speaking of power consumption, the TW1 has a rated battery life of 8 hours on a full charge. Snapping the TW1 back into the charge case, it can charge up the adapters an additional 3 times for a total of 32 hours of listening time. This rated battery life is truly impressive and considering the actual listening time is so long before recharging, it's hard to run into any low battery issues so long as you slot them back into the charge case every time you're done using them. In fact, I was struggling to drain them down in my usage. For example, in my testing, I went for 4 hours straight of listening and it only dropped the adapters down to 70% battery life and it's a pretty refreshing upgrade in battery life and usage compared to my AirPods Pro. Part of the reason why I was able to use these adapters for so long was because of the comfort in the true wireless adapters. These are probably one of the most comfortable Shure adapters or cables that they have ever produced. In the past, I was pretty vocal about not liking the metal wire in their over-ear cables. I hated their BT2 adapters because I couldn't stand the inflexible metal wire and the pressure points it created on my ear. This design of the TW1, on the other hand, is a much more rubberized formed cable, which is flexible and conforms to my ears so perfectly that it almost feels like it's not even there. That means exercising with these are gonna be an amazing experience. If you already use your IEMs while exercising and hate the cable noises that you get transmitted through uh, the cable to your IEMs, you're gonna love these adapters. They stay in the ear in place while you're jumping up and down, and it's also possible to keep them hooked up on your ear but popped out so that you can hear what's going on around you. I really wish all future Sure products adapt this design because it's just that good. Now, one of the most important topics is sound quality. Unfortunately, I don't have much to say on this matter, which is probably a good thing. The sound sounds good and is consistent with the BT2 adapter with very little difference between this and the cable version of my SE-A46s. Granted, I don't claim to be an audiophile, but I do appreciate a good clarity and expansive soundstage. From what I can tell, there's very little difference or appreciable loss in sound quality. And if you're running something like a 215, 315, or even 425, I doubt you'll be able to tell much difference, if at all. 
If you're running an 846 with a dedicated amp and playing lossless files, sure, I'm not gonna tell you that there's no difference at all. But I think for most people who are looking for Bluetooth adapters, these are gonna be a welcome quality for most. Within the Apple ecosystem, meaning iOS or macOS, the codec for this audio will be defaulted to AAC. Uh, there's really no way to change this, that's just the default for these products. However, on other platforms, the TW1 adapters are going to be compatible with APTX, APTX HD, APTX Low Latency Audio, Sony LDAC, and SBC. So I think it's safe to say that these adapters were designed for both comfort as well as sound quality. Now, I want to cover some other positive miscellaneous bits before talking about my gripes for this product. The charge case is actually a really, really nice charge case. It's much nicer and easier to use than any previous shirt case in my experience. Uh, it's a good compact size and the earbuds clip into the charge holder where three electrical points connect to each adapter for charging. You can charge it right side up or you can charge it upside down on the left or on the right. There's an adapter charge LED that can be visible even with the case all zipped up. On the back side, there is a case battery charge level indicator with the push of a button. If you can't tell already, I think the charge case is one of the best parts of this kit and is perfectly contains my IEMs for the first time after all these years. And what I mean by that is I don't have to worry about tangling cables or I don't have to coil up the cables after every use. I just pop them in and zip them up and it's good to go. This thing is great. Changing topics a little bit, if you download the Sure Play app on your phone, you can control the true wireless adapter settings, change prompts or tones, volume levels, set EQ levels, uh, check battery levels, indicate which IEMs you have attached to the TW1 for product specific profiles. Uh, you can even play your music directly from the app. One of the most important features is the capability for over the air firmware updates with this app more on this later. Now let's talk about what's not so great. The first issue I have with this product is the lackluster phone communication capability. Each earbud adapter appears to have holes for microphones, but only the right earbud is able to produce any sound from a teleconference or a call. Rather than producing stereo sound during a phone call, only the right ear gets voice sounds. I can't understand why they wouldn't give you stereo or dual mono during a call. Uh, even AirPods can do it just fine, or other earbuds can do it as well. The phone call experience is just really not that great, and I keep on going back to my AirPods Pro for teleconferences. What this also means is if you have your left earbud in, you may miss a phone call because the right one is just not audible. Even if it's only using the right microphone, I think Sure should upgrade the firmware to support both earbuds to work during a phone call. My second gripe is, or was, some buggy firmware issues with the TW1s. It boiled down to poor connectivity, long switching connection issues, and random disconnects. Uh, depending on the source, the TW1 may intermittently drop the connection for a split second or a hiccup in the music stream. Uh, this was worse on my laptop than on my phone in my experience, but I can't say if that's significant. I'm not sure if it's a signal strength issue or if it's random. I, just don't know. I also ran into issues with the left side desyncing from the right side, so one ear would get a sound a few milliseconds before the other one. As for switching issues, it would also take a long time to switch from the phone to the MacBook Pro, and sometimes connectivity would just fail to connect unless I rebooted the adapter. These issues sound very serious, and indeed, I was about to send this product back to Amazon for being defective. But after a quick bit of detective work, uh, it appears that uh, there are firmware updates that you can install via the Sure Play app. After updating the 7.7.9, most of these issues were largely eliminated. Looking back at the firmware history release notes, it looks like Sure has been actively patching and improving the firmware for better connection speed, pairing experience, and bug fixes. So it's pretty promising that they're actively working on to improve the experience of this new system. But it does look like they may have rushed the product out the door initially. Make sure to update the firmware on your set before you actually start using them. Another note is that the Bluetooth adapters appear to be available for their entire lineup of, with IEMs uh, via their Aonic lineup. So it's not just an obscure product or an upgrade. It's gonna be pretty popular and prevalent across their entire lineup so that we can be 
confident that they're going to be supporting this going forward. At $179, this little upgrade for existing SE users is not cheap. Uh, I think it's actually a little less bundled with new IEMs, but still not cheap. However, I do think that this is still the best option for sure users or fans if they're looking for wireless earbuds. There's just so many things great about this little product that I could pr forgive the poor quality calling experience. Still, I think there are plenty of competitive products that you may want to cross shop if you're looking at these. In a future video, I'll compare these with my AirPods Pro that I use on a daily basis. If you guys found this video insightful, go ahead and smash that like button and consider subscribing to this channel if you want to see future tech-related content like AirPods Pro versus the TW1. Again, my name is Stan. I'll catch you guys in the next video.